How's it going everyone and welcome back to next episode on how to program JavaScript. Now in this episode we're going to talk about something called data types which might not sound as the most exciting thing to talk about but it's very important that you know about data types before you get into JavaScript. So in the last episode we talked about something called variables and variables and data types sort of go hand in hand because uh, we store data inside variables. So we need to know about the different types of data we then store inside variables. So when it comes to JavaScript, when we create a variable, like we talked about in the previous episode, we do so by declaring a variable by using the uh, the keyword var. Then we write the name of the variable, so we can call this one name if we want to. And then we set it equal to some kind of value, or we can just declare it and then not set it equal to anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it equal to uh, Daniel, because it's my name. And what I want to point out here with this example is that right now we have a uh, variable that is declared using var. And that is something that is sort of a lazy way of declaring variables, but it's the way we do it inside JavaScript. In other programming languages, we sometimes declare variables by uh, defining what kind of data that is inside this variable. So if we were to take another programming language like C Sharp, we would do so by saying that we have a uh, integer inside this variable, for example. So instead of var, we would say integer and then use some kind of number because that's a number, an integer. So in JavaScript, we just use the keyword called var in order to define that we have a variable. And this is going to be relevant a little bit later on in this lesson when I start talking about how we can actually uh, figure out what kind of data we have inside a variable because right now we can't really see what kind of data we have inside this specific variable other than looking at the data, which is right here. But when we look at it inside the browser, if we were to actually console log what we have here, console.log, parentheses, and then put this variable and log it inside my console inside the browser, you're actually going to notice that we just have Daniel. But I can't tell what kind of data this is, even though I could probably guess that this is going to be a string because it has characters and it's a word. But we can't really tell by looking at the browser here what exactly this type of variable is. So later on in this episode, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can figure that out. But before then, we're just going to go ahead and talk about the different types of variables that we have, or not different types of variables, but different types of data we have inside JavaScript. Now, the first data type that I want to talk about in this episode is something called the string data type. And I did just create an example of it right here. And a string is essentially we create a word or a sentence using characters. Now we define a string by wrapping double quotes around whatever word we want to create. And it's very important that when you create text, you need to make sure you wrap uh, the text inside double quotes. Otherwise, it's not going to be seen as a string, which is what we call text. So if we were to remove these double quotes and save it, you can now see we get a uncaught reference error inside the browser because it doesn't know what Daniel is defined as, what kind of data is Daniel. So we need to make sure that we go ahead and wrap double quotes around the data here. Now we could also go ahead and use single quotes. So we're to just use single quotes like so. It's also going to work. Now there's not really a big difference between using double quotes and single quotes when it comes to JavaScript. But when we create a string using, for example, single quotes, and I want to write some text inside of it, if I say Daniel is Nielsen, because that's my last name, if I can actually spell it correctly. If I want to use double quotes inside the actual string as part of the text, then I need to make sure that I didn't use double quotes around the string. Otherwise, it's going to cancel out. I don't know if you could just hear my dog snoring. He's right underneath me. Um, otherwise, it's going to cancel out the string. And when I say that, I mean that if I were to actually go here and do like this, where I'm using double quotes around the entire string and inside the string, then you can see that is has a different color and we get an error inside the browser because we just cancel out the string and continued it afterwards, which we can't really do. So in this example, we could also say it's where I use a single quote. In this example, the same thing goes. We can't use single quotes around it. Otherwise, it's going to give us an error. Now, I do want to show you another example here because this might not be the best way of solving the issue if you 
Let's say you have a piece of text that has both double quotes and single quotes inside the actual text, then we can't really use the solution where we just switch out uh, the quotes around the string. So in this case, we would actually need to escape the symbol or the, the character that we use inside the string. So if I'm using single quotes around the string and I want to use its as part of the string, then I need to escape the single quote inside the string, if that makes sense. So what I can do is I can write backslash right in front of the single quote, and now it's going to escape the single quote and not see it as part of uh, you know, defining a string. So if we were to save this, you can see that we still have the single quote inside the browser. If we could actually zoom in so you could see it. There we go. And the same thing goes if we were to go around the string and use double quotes. There we go, save it. And now you can see we escaped the characters inside the string. So this would be the best way of doing it if you were to use uh, the string uh, wrapping inside the actual string. Now I'm just going to go ahead and create a comment here so you know that this is a string data type. So I'm going to write string data type. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and go down to the next line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create something called a numeric data type, which means numbers. And I did not write forward slashes. I need to make sure I do that. There we go. Now a numeric data type is when we use numbers inside variables. And we basically have two different types we can use. Uh, the first example here is going to be, I'm just going to create a variable, which I could just call num1, set it equal to 1, which would be a number type inside a variable. Now we could also do like this, just to create something longer. And this is still going to be a number type. Now we also have something called a integer. Now an integer, if I just create another variable here, is going to be a number that has decimal points behind it. So if we were to say, this number here dot something is going to be an integer. So it just have some kind of decimal points behind it. And the same goes for negative numbers. If we were to go inside num1, if we were to write negative, whatever number we have here, it's still going to be a number. And if we were to go down to the next one here and do the same thing, it's still going to be an integer. So negatives and positives both go when it comes to number types. Now there's another thing I want to explain when it comes to numeric and string data types because I might get questions about it in the comments, which is the fact that if I were to create a string data type and just call it something like number, and set it equal to a string and insert some kind of number inside of the string, is this going to be a number data type or is it going to be a string data type? Well, because we wrap double quotes around it, it's going to be a string data type. So this is not going to be seen as it will be seen as a number, but not as a string data type. So there's a difference between using numbers and using data types, if you could say that. So, so this is not going to be a number data type, it's going to be a string data type because it's inside double quotes, if that sort of makes sense. Now, the next type of data I want to talk about is something called a Boolean, which is something that we also use quite a lot when it comes to uh, using JavaScript because a Boolean is a true or false statement. And in JavaScript, we do a lot of things like conditions, which means that we say, is this the same as this over here? Or is this statement true or false? Then do something inside the code. So we use Booleans a lot when it comes to writing scripts inside JavaScript. So a Boolean, if I were to just write a variable here, I can just say variable bool just to give it a name set it equal to true, or I could create one, just gonna create a new one, and set it equal to false. And we're just gonna make sure we don't have the same names for these variables here, like so. Now, when it comes to Booleans inside JavaScript, there's another thing I want to show you, which is that if I were to create a third Boolean down here and call it Boolean of a bool three, and set it equal to one, it's going to be the same as setting it equal to true because in programming, one is going to be true and zero is going to be false. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create it here. So the first statement up here is going to be the same thing as down here. And again, false is going to be the same thing as zero. So just in case you're aware of it, we can also use ones and zeros to define true and false inside JavaScript.
Now, the next one I want to talk about is something called undefined. And undefined is something that we did talk about in the previous episode, I do believe, if I remember correctly. And undefined means that we have a variable that does not have any things that equal to it yet, or we haven't put any data inside the variable. So if we were to go ahead and create a variable and call it something like, hey, and just declare it, but not set it equal to anything, if we were to take variable hey, console lock it, you're gonna see that we get undefined, which means that we have no value assigned to this variable, which brings me to the next data type, which is something called null. So we'll just go ahead and create a comment to say we have something called null data type, which is not the same as undefined. Uh, a null data type is when we take a variable and set it equal to nothing. So we do have something that we can use to define that we have it equal to nothing because we don't want to have undefined inside our variable here. So what I can do is I can say, hey, two, set it equal to null which is going to set equal to, it's the same thing as saying it's equal to nothing, but undefined says that we haven't set it equal to anything, which is different in JavaScript. So right now, if we were to echo out, hey, two, or not echo it out, but console lock in, you can see that we get null inside uh, our browser here. Now, at the beginning of this episode, I mentioned something about JavaScript being able to tell what kind of data you insert inside a variable. But we as humans, if we were to see it inside the browser, might not always be able to tell what kind of data that's inside uh, the variable. So if we want to actually know what type of data we have inside the variable, we can use something called an operator, which is called type of. So if we were to go inside the console lock down here and say we have something called type of space, it's going to go ahead and tell us what kind of object or not what kind of object is just, just read it inside the browser, so it just said it, uh, but what kind of data we have inside the variable. So right now you can actually see that null, it says is called an object and that is not true, but it's something about the browser not being able to tell what exactly null is for a data type. So don't think about the null being an object in this example here. In all the other data types, it's going to tell us something different. So just ignore the fact that it says object inside the console because it is a null data type. Now, if we were to go ahead and use name, uh, which is a string data type, and paste it inside here, you can see it says string inside the browser. If we were to use num1, it's going to see we have a uncaught, whoops, let's actually insert the right place. It's going to tell us it is a number data type. And if we were to use the second number we have up here, which is a integer, it's going to also tell us it's a number, but it is in fact a integer data type, even though it does say number because it is essentially a number, but it's an integer, if that makes sense. Now, if we were to take the next one called a Boolean and insert it inside the type of, save it, you can see we have a Boolean. Now, if we were to take this one down here, where we set it equal to one, it's going to tell us it's equal to a number because essentially it is a number. Uh, it's not gonna look at the variable name and just tell it that, oh, well, the variable name has bool in it, so it has to be a Boolean. Uh, it's actually gonna go ahead and say it's a number. But if you were to use this in a condition inside JavaScript, which again, we haven't talked about yet, uh, you can use once and zero to define true and false. So just know that it's still a number data type, but you can use it as a Boolean as well. Now, if we were to use the variable called hey, you're gonna see we get undefined, which we already did inside this example here. So this is what we have when it comes to data types inside JavaScript. And these are different types of data we will be using in a different exercises and you know scripts that we can write using JavaScript when we create some different examples. And it's just a good idea to know how to write these since you know, wrapping double quotes around a string and knowing how to escape characters is a really good thing to know about uh, when it comes to JavaScript. So I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.